Hey guys, I hope you are well today. Um, I was in my email system earlier today and I've hit 100 automation. So I thought that's a bit of a milestone and um, maybe I should base that on my life this week and give you a few tips on what to automate. Um, I, I didn't think I was a particularly amazing automator or anything like that, but I had a, um, a call with the team at Active Campaign recently where they wanted to learn a bit more about what I was doing in my business and get some feedback from me or see if they could help me. And they called me um, a, a power automator or something along those lines, which was kind of funny to me because I'm essentially a one woman business. Um, you know, I have got some VAs that work with me, but um, if they're comparing me to all of their clients and I'm a power automator, then that's pretty funny. So anyway, a hundred automations, there's a lot going on. And I am a massive fan of automation when you have your own business at home because we, you know, we, our time is so scarce and you know, we've got a life, we want to live a life, we do not want to be working, 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 especially when technology can do some of that for you and you know, really free up your time so you're focused on the important stuff and not on admin. And then you don't also need to be necessarily having other staff doing things for you when you can have technology do it. Like let's remove um, a bit of the, the human error um, out of things. Um, it's not always fail proof because technology can still have its moments and you know automations can um, you know have a bungle or stop working. But here are my top five. So the first one I for me would be your accounting system. If you can have an accounting system that automatically syncs with your bank accounts, PayPal, Stripe, wherever you're taking payments or making payments as well um, and records it all in the system for you and even potentially categorizes those into your expense lines or income lines, that is an amazing time saver. You know, you do not want to be sitting there line by line entering things on a spreadsheet every month when there are so many systems out there that can automate your accounting. So that for me is number one. Please um, get on that if you are currently spreadsheet based. You don't need to be. Um, number two would be booking meetings for clients. So clients booking meetings with you, um, stopping all of that to and fro when you are you know, just trying to find a time that suits or a day that suits and going back and forward via email or even over the phone. Um, and then if they need to change it, they've got to call you or message you and change it. That is a thing of the past. There are plenty, again, of online booking systems that you can use, some of them for free as well, where people can select their own time. They can book themselves in, they can reschedule, they can cancel, all of that. I like to take mine a little step further than just the actual online booking system. Um, I use Calendly, but there's quite a few other ones out there. Um, I also have an, you know, that process when someone does book certain meetings with me, I then use my email marketing system to give them some pre-meeting communication and also post-meeting communication. Um, so I have some automations that are set up to set off some pre-meeting correspondence with them. Um, not a lot, it's just that, hey, I'm really looking forward to that meeting. And I find that it's better for me to come from my own um, marketing system than to come from Calendly's system because then that communication is sort of stored there as opposed to all in the one spot. So that's one of the things that I do and that's part of my 100 um, automations I have in Active Campaign. Um, a big one, what would be probably the bulk of my automation um, numbers in the system would be my onboarding sequences for clients. Um, so every service that I sell, every online program, um, masterclass, course, whatever it is, even the different levels have a separate onboarding sequence because I'm very, very passionate about uh, giving people the right information for them, um, it being really, really tailored. So it's a very personalized experience. It doesn't feel like an automation. It feels like this is me sending them an email with what they need to know. Um, so, you know, it does, it does take a bit of time to do that for sure. But now that it's done and there, uh, people sign up and they get the emails, they get all the information that they need. 
Um, and I've even built in, you know, check-ins, um, progress check-ins, follow-ups, all of those things. For my course, Business Jam, um, it's a 10-week overall program. You know, there is, the whole thing is run on automations where every week they get a, another email with what's happening that week, um, reminders about the group calls, all of those things, they're all automated. So, you know, I did the initial work to set it up, but now that it's there, um, they get a fantastic experience, they get the communication, but I am not physically sitting there sending those emails to them every time. Number four would be um, a lead nurture program. Um, so that's a nice big, you know, high level sounding word. But what that means is things like your subscriber welcome sequence if someone subscribes to your freebie. Then what happens after that? Um, you know, what do you want them to get next? What sort of ongoing communication might you have? I do a little bit of spontaneous um, communication with my list as well as some automated ones. So whenever somebody um, opts in for one of my free downloads or signs up to a program, they get a, you know, a little series of emails that gives them the information they need to know and follows up with them after that. Um, and then number five would be something I think a lot of businesses probably don't do, and that would be offboarding. So have a real think about, you know, when somebody leaves or finishes, what should you be saying to them? How do you offboard them? Um, you know, things like asking for a review or for feedback is a great thing to have in an offboarding sequence because otherwise you forget about it, time goes on, and then you feel like it's too late to ask for the review. Um, so definitely think about having that in your um, offboarding sequence. You might also have some things that would, um, you know, administration wise, you know, maybe it's their client folder, documentation, any of those things you can um, use to offboard them and you can set that up in your program. So whether it's an email, it's a communication to them or my little um, tool that I love to use that connects other systems like Google Drive and files and documents is a tool called Zapier. Um, and you can do, I think, five automations for free on Zapier. So it's a fantastic um, platform to get familiar with. That's it for today. Just a really quick one. They were my five um, things, top things to automate in your business. Um, hopefully you've got all of those ticked. If you haven't, um, then there's a bit of food for thought there for you to look through and see which of the five you could look at automating to save yourself a bit of time. Give yourself time back in your day to be doing other things or to be working on stuff that's going to bring your revenue in instead of um, instead of administration. Um, let me know if you've got any questions or comments. I'm happy to, to share with you um, the names of any of the platforms that I use um, so that you can check them out as well. Okay, see you guys. Bye.